on cornerofthegalaxy.com. Welcome to Corner of the Galaxy, the show that talks 100% LA Galaxy soccer. We're glad you could join us. Now it's time to sit back and relax as your hosts navigate through the twisting, turning, but never boring world of the five-time MLS Cup champion, LA Galaxy. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Corner of the Galaxy on cornerofthegalaxy.com. I'm your host, Josh Gessman, coming to you on a, let's see, it's a Thursday, it's September 1st. Happy September, everybody. Galaxy survive a very busy October. In fact, it was their second best month on record if you don't count February, which only had one game. We're going to talk about that. Uh, we're going to get you through the 2-2 draw with Toronto in Toronto. Continuing the road trip. Four points in the road trip. Is it good enough? Is it not? You know the word I want to use. We'll use it later. This is the PG-13 show. We have to limit that word. All right? We get Toronto through there. Then we're going to get you ready for Sporting Kansas City. A whole bunch of other things, including rumors about Julian Araujo and a lot more to help me do it. He's filling in because I look for everybody. And then it's Christian's turn. It's the man himself, Mr. Christian Miles. Christian, how you doing, buddy? Up, oh, you're still muted, bud. You're still muted. Don't worry. It's okay. I, I'm used to you. I'm fine. Go ahead, please, sir. That was my Kevin Baxter imitation. Oh, that was really good, actually. That was Thank the you. best Kevin Baxter Thank imitation you. that, that I you. actually remember. First, I want that hat. Yeah, you can't have it. I already told you. No. And second, I'm making a late run into the box, circa 2013. Allen Gordon off the bench, strong against San Jose. I like, I like it. I like it. You just That's you come it. you come crashing in with a mentality mm -hmm. that you're going to score or you're going to bruise, and either of those things make you a happy man at the end of the day. I'm knocking stuff over, getting everything out of my way to accomplish my goal. I I, I love it. That's I what I've come it. here for. I, I it's great. We're glad to have you. I I did say that you know I did. We, we work on a seniority, you know, system here, right? And the seniority yep. system is Eric usually gets first shot at most shows. He was traveling. Uh, then Sophie gets a chance to come in. And if Sophie can't, then I come to you. And everybody gets their chance at shows because everybody's busy. So it's a good system and it works. But I just want to shout out the soccer diva herself. Although this is a horrible screen grab. I apologize. I stole this from one of my Discord people. But uh, Miss, Miss Sophie Nicolau was on uh, Sky Sports and Love their that. transfer or their deadline day um, coverage that they had. So, so the soccer diva uh, in London, she was at the Arsenal game um, earlier this week. So it just, I mean, you know, she's blown up. She, we always knew she was bigger than the show. Is she just, she's just proving it over and look over. At her. Again. Yeah, we're just, we're lying in her wake. I, I like the London nightclub look. The girl, she's, she's holding it down. Well done, Sophie. Yeah, it's a, it's a big it's, fan. But yeah, big, he's a huge fan of Sophie. Sophie does some, uh, some great stuff. So anyway, um, we got that going on. So we're glad that, uh, that, you know, Sophie can certainly help us out and, and do a whole bunch of diff different things there. She's but doing when she great. Can't, I'm here. And when, and that's, see, that's the whole thing. It's, it's about next man off the bench, right? It's about next man up mentality. Mm -hmm. You can't get settled into anything. You have to keep going. And by the way, people are saying Christian miles from the PAC 12 network, the same guy, <laughs> that guy. That guy, we listen, we go big or go home here. Okay. We got Soccer <laughs> Diva on Sky Sports. We got Pac 12 Network in here. We have J the Josh Gessman from Corner of the Galaxy. I don't know if everybody knows. I'm a pretty big deal within a very, very small radius of people. Um, but yeah, Christian, you were doing some. I actually asked you, I think last week, if you could do it. And you were you were doing UCLA soccer, I think. Yes, I am. Yeah, I'm, I'm really involved with UCLA soccer, Pac 12. So yeah, I was doing the uh, man, we just kicked things off last weekend. So in the midst of that, which is a good time, a lot of little commonality, a little bit of ties between UCLA and uh, and uh, the LA Galaxy, of course, go way back to Ziggy. But you know, I get a chance to see some of these uh, Galaxy 2 guys 
that have you know featured against UCLA in the college ranks that make their way into USL and you know guys like you know Danny Aguirre making their way from the college ranks into the USL and now moving their way in and that is such a great thing to behold and like watch it's it's just a blast so it kind of all ties together it's kind of a weird little world but it's great that's good that's good I'm glad I I, I keep meaning to go up and actually watch a game so one of these days I will go up and watch a UCLA soccer game that seems like it might be fun um Get your feeling here now. New England, you get the two-one win. Um, just a just a real strong sort of grinded out road performance. Uh, then you go to Toronto, Christian. You get a two-two mm-hmm. draw for the LA Galaxy. Now, I know lots of people are hoping for the win, and I understand why you're winning one nothing at halftime. The Galaxy have been pretty strong in situations, but actually mm-hmm. not recently. They've given up points twice now from halftime leads. Uh, Seattle and now and now Toronto. But in both cases, battling back to get a point, we're starting to see a pattern here for the LA Galaxy. One pattern is four games unbeaten. That ties their longest unbeaten streak in the last two years. Uh, They also did it earlier in April. So four games unbeaten. This is in in league play. I don't count the other games. That doesn't count. Uh, Four games unbeaten in, uh, in league play. Um, so they're starting to string some results together. I asked Greg Vanny after the game. I said, and and this should tee us off sort of for this Toronto conversation that we need to have is it feels and it looks like perhaps that I'm cracking up because you went down on your chair, like your chair, mm-hmm. you're adjusting your chair height and you started dropping down. And it's just, yeah. it, was, it was some comedy. If, if it was visual comedy, hey, if hey, nothing else. Yeah. Go back the other way. No, no, don't. <laughs> <laughs> but I asked Greg Vanny and I basically said, does this feel like before the international break? If we remember the LA Galaxy coming off a U.S. Open Cup win over LAFC, then go to Austin and beat Austin. And there was this sense, this build, this excitement that was sort of behind the LA Galaxy. I said, does it feel like that? And he said, yeah, maybe. He goes, certainly. I mean, you know, Greg, Greg always really kind of wants to stay in the moment. And so sometimes it's hard to pull him back and make him think of other things or, or, or doing some other stuff. Um, so... It's just, it feels that way. It feels like there's momentum behind this. And I don't know that we've been able to say that a lot this season or in previous seasons. It feels like something is building. And building, for once, Christian, at the correct time, too. Um, what what are your thoughts? 100%. I mean, you and I were talking about this just before we came on. Like I was telling you that I've, I've kind of been with the organization since 2016. So we blame you. We blame you. Coinciding with the downturn. So... <laughs> So it's probably my fault, <laughs> but I, for the first time, I feel good about this team and the foundation that it has going forward. I feel optimistic about it. Like I feel confident based upon the performances that I've seen. We can go back to 2018 and 2019 was lots on, and you know we knew we had a massive talent on our hands, but we didn't have that assuredness because of the surrounding cast behind him. I feel like this team. I honestly feel like I tweeted it today. I feel like they turned a corner, right? And in terms of the way they played, yes, it's not. It's by far the finished article, and, and anybody would say that. But I really feel that they've turned the corner. A, a credit to the staff for signing these mid-season signings, like Brugman, who I think has been brilliant. And the last time I was here, I was lauding him, and, and it's nice to see him do well. But yeah, these adjustments have done well. They've adapted well. They are the game changers. They've come in, at, as you said, at the exact right time. So I feel really good, and it's just, it's nice to see a team come together at, at that time of the year, and I really feel that this team will make the playoffs without without a doubt. I, even though we were in the playoffs by the end of last night, but now finishing outside because of other results. So We'll, we'll, explain, yeah. we'll explain that, too. The Galaxy yeah. are actually in a very good position compared to Portland, who jumped them. So it's, it's great to feel good about this. <laughs> it, it, it gives you know? some life. It gives some life. It gives you, yeah. you know, uh, there there is a Twitter account that, like, so, says something like, the LA Galaxy haven't been disappointing in X number of days. And it's like, and, the, like, they've been extending. This is, like, the longest streak that it's sort of been going. Yeah. Um, very interesting that it also happens on the same day that season ticket memberships are, are, you could either cancel or stay on August 31st. That was the deadline. And so, you know, you wonder how many, how many season ticket memberships did, uh, did Pooch, uh, save with his game tying goal, right? I mean, there's, listen, this is all about emotion. This is all about, you know, how you feel as a fan and how you're going after these things and whether, whether you feel like you're still connected to a club that has been disappointing for, for, you know, the last, you know, at least five years. Right. And so, yeah. um, 
so you look at all those things and that sort of, so I, I wonder just in the terms of entertainment value is how much did that save? Um, let's talk about this game in some detail here. Uh, the LA Galaxy rotated the lineup. Super, mm-hmm. super interesting. And we've been talking about this for since the Sporting Kansas City game, which is funny, full circle coming up on on Sunday. Um, but LA Galaxy started Douglas Costa in that Sporting Kansas City game. Um, and certainly from what Vanny said and what you could see on the field, Douglas Costa wrecked that uh, formation and wrecked the game plan and the whole deal. And so we were trying to figure out and, you know, sort of see there were guys who were talking about not following the game plan uh, about how some players weren't doing it. And it seemed like it was Douglas Costa. And at that point, it seemed like Douglas Costa was put on a shelf after that sporting Kansas city game. Right. And, yeah. and we saw that he wasn't starting. He would come in maybe for a second half, but he wasn't getting that full feature. Um, mm-hmm. And here you go. You rotate after a game on Sunday against New England, right? You go Wednesday uh, to Toronto, so the Galaxy uh, come into that, and there's some rotations, right? So Victor Vasquez comes into that starting. Grant Sir takes over for Cabral. Um, you know, it was I think Gasper sort of ter- t- uh, took in for for Edwards. No, Ed- Gasper actually started because Edwards has yeah. sort of been hurt a little bit. Um, but there's just like these little rotations that are made, right? These little changes that are made, and one of them is Douglas Costa comes in, um, and if I didn't know any better and hadn't been watching this entire year. I would think that Douglas Costa is a force to be reckoned with for the LA Galaxy. Um, Energy, Christian, uh, technique, the ability to play at game speed to affect change within like a given bounds, uh, the ability to chop defenders or chop players, make them miss, open up spaces, create balls. This, that was the most Douglas Costa performance we have seen from this version of Douglas Costa since he joined the LA Galaxy. Greg Vanny said it afterwards. He thought he played the best game in an LA Galaxy shirt. I agree 100%. But for a guy who was basically dead, Vanny benched him, to a guy now who has given himself a chance, Christian, and Mm -hmm. not only a chance, but a chance to really affect how this team plays down the stretch. I mean, what did you think of his play, and am I I overstating any of that? I don't think you're overstating. I think, you know, to echo Vanny's points... It was his best performance. The free kick was a stroke of brilliance. We know he has that in his locker. I've been so puzzled by him, and, I, and I've defended him you know, throughout the season saying, hey, you know, when you come in to a new league and a new system and a new language, it's, you've got to give him time to bet in. But it, it, to be frank, his performances up until recently just haven't been good enough, and, and he needed this performance. He came under some fan criticism, and, and justifiably so, media criticism. Um, it, it, to me, it's it's interesting when you look at a player like Douglas Costa, who's he's world class, gifted on his day, and so technically sound, but he's always had a problem fitting into the team scheme, and he has he he's been the great disruptor to this setup, and that's why, justifiably so, you know, Vanny benched him, brought him back in. I thought he was very good. What, what I saw out of him that I haven't seen out of him mm-hmm. was tracking back, yes, balls. You know, I mean, don't I mean this is a vague generalization. You don't see that a lot of it of Brazilian attackers, <laughs> and and for him to come back and you know, I remember him winning a ball, you know, on, on on just on the outside of his own penalty box, and that I it kind of raised my eyebrows. And wow, I haven't seen that. And you know, he put in a good shift, and and he was out there giving it. Now, of course, he played some wrong balls, and he did. You know, was trying to link up, and he doesn't, you know, stretch the defenses because he's kind of that inverted presence. But yeah, I mean. He was, and he fit in. And he's embracing this team ethos. Basically, the bottom line is for, that's my impression of it. And I think he's going to be a good fit. He has a role to play with this team, whether it's in a starting role or whether it's coming on as a substitute. That remains to be seen. The point is, there's depth, there's options, and it gives flexibility uh, for the team right now. And they can change the way they play because the way they played against Toronto is vastly different than what we saw against New England. Isn't that isn't that interesting though that, yeah. that that that's that's that really is true by the way that is a hundred percent true that the yeah. it was such a vastly different performance Greg highlighted it after the game as well he also talked about Costa for, forcing some balls and and he said and, and Douglas even said the same like I need to do better with that right and there was some yeah. of that um, but. It, you know, uh, Nikki Kay, who was on the Spectrum Sportsnet coverage, actually said that Vanny had seen something from Costa in training. So often we talk about coaches knowing and seeing players in training every single day. And 
so often it's sort of overlooked as the place where decisions are made every single day about how guys perform, about why this guy didn't start over that guy if they're perfectly healthy. Like there's all these things that sort of go into this formula of who's going to play and who doesn't. You take Douglas Costa, who had a stinker of a game against Sporting Kids, a horrible game. And it's yeah. the reason that score was 4-2. And, and Bandy probably should have pulled him a lot sooner. And, you know, it's one of those. It's like, well, yeah, hindsight uh, is twenty twenty. But you have him now where Vanny's like, I see something in him. And basically it is this this team ethos, this ability to understand the game plan and to be part of the solution in helping track back, in doing the little things, in doing everything that he needs to do in order to be successful within the formation. Yeah, that's that's got to be if that's true. And I su- I suppose it is right, because um, I actually heard Costa was starting before the, the lineups came out. And I was sort of like, that's going to be an interesting thing to sort of watch. Um, and so if that's true, then what has Greg Vanny done with the ability to affect star players? I mean, anywhere and get them playing in a system that works. Vanny's working on things here and he got somebody like Douglas Costa who didn't look like he was bought into anything Christian to play the best team ball we've seen him play. I don't think it can be overstated just because I think this is such a huge, important thing that needs to have focus on it, that Douglas Costa is was a absolute bust. And I'm not saying that he has solved any of that, right? But yeah. he took a step towards that. And what we saw against Toronto, if it's not just a flash in the pan, which it could be, could mean the difference between the LA Galaxy making the playoffs, winning playoff games, going further in the playoffs than you think that they can. All of those things could be the difference because you have players now like Ricky Pouge, um, now you have players like Douglas Costa coming to play and showing that there's quality on this team and it's quality that has not been there for, for most of this year. I, I, also, too, I mean, it comes down to man management. And, and it's, it's very tricky when in Major League Soccer, it's not like you are managing a team in the rest of the world where you can, you know, you're not producing, get out. Right. But when you have a designated player, this guy comes with an extra honest, I've got to include him in my first 11 because we're paying him, you know, umpteen million dollars a year right three million bucks a year so i've got it there's pressure from above for that and you know you pay and and justifiably so but when he's not performing it takes a lot of huevos rancheros yeah to say hey look douglas coast i know you played for juventus and i know you played for bayern munich but you're not measuring up take a seat on the bench and that was the best thing he could have done and to douglas credit douglas's credit i think he's kind of heated that i think a lot of heat that he took for his tweets Right. During the time that uh, he was suspended for that double uh, double game suspension earlier this season, I'd also think that really hit home. And, and to his credit, he's responded. So a combination of that. And, and you know, as much as we talk about tactics and, you know, four, three, threes, three, five, twos, whatever, as, it's, it's, it's much about motivating a player. And you're talking about Greg Vanny trying to motivate a player who's been at the top of the game, who's, you know, and it puts him at a disadvantage in terms of prestige. But I, the way he has worked this, he's really pushed the right buttons. I'm really impressed with the way it happens because Costa, the bottom line, he has responded. Look, he's he's not perfect. He's not the polished diamond that we saw three or four years ago playing overseas. But the point is he contributes. That goal, no one else could have scored on this team. Perhaps maybe Ricky Puj. And that, those are the moments you need. Game changers, match winners. He has a role to play. And, and I credit the coaching staff for, for getting the best out of him. And I credit Costa for you know, responding to that. I think it's it's great to see. And it, it's it's a signal of the buy-in, right, Josh? Right. Right. He's buying in. I didn't think he bought in you know, before. I, I didn't see the buy-in. He's, I felt like he was here for the contract and the money in L.A. And that's it. And I'll go out there and you know have a kick about now he's trying to buy him and you know he's not assimilating absolutely perfectly and it's not fluid but the effort is there the buying is there so praise to him a lot of ground to make up but right. still signs are positive in the right direction by the way a five dollar super chat from what the uh uh they say let's ruin the mood here's money to help replace the dishes you broke when raheem edwards caused the penalty kick ah yes um, this is, I we mean, have to go there right now, so I mean, you do, I mean, I think you should, I listen, let's bookend the, yeah. let's bookend the, the greatness and the badness, right? 
Yeah. Um, here's the thing, and I want to be very clear about this. Having played Defender at no sort of upper level whatsoever, I'm hoping Christian could back me up having covered this game for a very long time. Um, but Here too, buddy. Right? Yeah, I mean, you know, I, ta- I love talking to professional soccer players and being like, hey, when I played in high school on my JV team, Back in the uh, ASO. Back in ASO, you know, I was a pretty serious center back. I, I'm not going to lie, but I did have a goal one year. Um, so, but, but everybody needs to take it easy on defenders and especially on outside defenders. Outside defenders in every single league, in every single game, get beat. Um, yeah. And that's because we're asking them to do stuff that the in the modern game that is not necessarily just defense. Okay. Chase Gasper is a great great sort of uh you know uh indication of this right chase gasper is not a quick man he he works a ton though he really works his butt off but they're asking him to be part of the attack up that left hand side and then they give the ball away and make him run all the way back and then everybody's mad that he's getting torched on that side well then don't give the ball away in bad positions every goal that is scored is because of a defensive mistake okay that happens in every single game so for Chase Gasper, who had a wonderful game, I heard everybody screaming in the first half that Chase Gasper needed to get off the field. And listen, he was getting tired whenever they pulled him off, so it was the correct sub. But at the same time, in the first half, they were telling him to come off. And it was like, calm down. They, they Remember who was on the other side of that, that, that line, right? You had Insigne and Bernadeschi. These are not small talents. Yeah. And for the most part, and let's, let's say what it is, for the most part, the LA Galaxy shut down Bernadeschi and Insigne. And that is something that if you didn't take that away from this game, then you missed the entire chess match that was going on there. Toronto found other ways to score, right? They got the penalty kick and Bernadeschi created that. And that was an Edwards mistake for sure. 100% individual mistake on defense, not defending that at all. And he won't defend it. And Greg said it should have never happened. And he knows that. And that is what it is. You know, the whole deal. But for, for me, looking at the balance of this game, the defense played a very, very good game. Um, and I think if you're looking at Insigne and you're looking at Bernardeschi as guys who are absolutely top talent still in this world, um, and the Galaxy kept them off the score sheet outside of Bernardeschi converting a penalty kick and, and drawing that one, I, I feel really good about the directions the defense is going. Now, Raheem Edwards, in that particular play, Christian, he goes up and he tries to challenge Bernardeschi. Bernardeschi ch- turns him and tosses him on the ground. Perfectly legal, didn't have any problems with it. Um, and now Edwards is chasing, and Bernardeschi's running away. And Edwards is getting desperate. And while Edwards is getting desperate, he forgets the one most important thing about Bernadeschi is that he's left-footed. And he's running on the right-hand side, and he's running out of space. I'm not saying he can't kick right-footed, right? But I'm saying his strongest play is to cut or chop in that position. And instead, Edwards gives him the out, which is to take him out in that game. And it was a panic move, and it happens. And those things happen. And yes, did it cost the LA Galaxy two points? Probably. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, does that mean that Edwards is the worst left back in the history of Major League Soccer? No. Um, he made a mistake on the night, and he actually provided a lot, I thought, going forward in the offense in, toward, in order to get that goal back. Um, so it's all balanced for these things. Um, and I think that if we, if we leave Raheem alone a little bit and we look outside of the other guys who had excellent games, that on balance, the LA Galaxy played better better than Toronto, had a lower XG than Toronto because the Galaxy's still having trouble finishing their chances off, okay? But in the in the whole scheme of things, Galaxy pretty, put a pretty dominant midweek performance on a team that is was very, very hungry for the playoffs. You come off three days of rest on the road to a team that's revitalized, you know, I think that had been on a, a one loss in five games and they yeah. put about 15 goals up in five or six games, conceded two shots on target and dominated over 60% of the possession, bossed the first half. I thought they made Toronto look really ordinary. Look, it's a stupid challenge from Raheem Edwards. He knows it. Everybody knows it. We're not going to sugarcoat it. Stupid. Gave it away. Lost his head. Can't leave your feet in the penalty area. Done, dusted, whatever it is. What Raheem gives you an attack, you have to take the, the holes that he will give away in the back. But... Yeah, I'd have to say that, that, that the Galaxy really made them look ordinary. Now, look, the Galaxy also had their moments of vulnerability. When they things did. changed in the in the second half, they brought on Jimenez, and which kind of flew under the radar in terms of us TV viewers. We right. were like, oh, all of a sudden Jimenez is on. And, yeah, and oh, look, know, he's scoring. On. You're like, what? <laughs> um, which befuddled me calling the game for radio. Uh, but uh, and that, So when, when they made their changes, 
it did befuddle the galaxy. They got under their skin, and it was a, a great adjustment by Bob Bradley, as you, as you would expect. But um, when Vanny finally got a hold of things and changed it for himself, the Galaxy managed to regather control of this game as they had. I thought they just owned the first half. And yes. Berardeschi, I think he did have his moments against Gasper, uh, a few moments. And, yeah. Uh, aside of the penalty. And you're going to have that, you know, with, with players that are world class like uh, uh, Bernadeschi. Um, but you, you can't just pin his blame on Raheem Edwards. And, you know, and Vanny said that as much in his press conference. So. I think defensively, I'm not sold. I am concerned about because I think it's about eight goals or so that they've conceded in the last four or five games. So that's right. what concerns me. The attack is really livened up. I mean, you have a dynamism. But with the fundamental difference for me, Josh, so I just said to just sum it up in a bow, this team is not giving the ball up in stupid areas. Yes. It's not putting itself on the back foot. They're not shooting themselves in the foot where we saw this just time and time again throughout the season. They're taking better care of the ball, and a lot of that is the credit to the new signings like Brugman, who is better. Brugman, Brugman played so well in this game. And listen, I, I'm going to show you something here. I'm going to bring it up, and I don't mean to interrupt you, but I want to bring this up. This is uh, Fot Mob's ratings, and they had Brugman at like a 6.8. And I'm like, yeah. you know, defensive midfielders don't get the love that they really deserve. Brugman was, and Vanny said it afterwards. He talked about it in the press conference. He said, I thought it was one of his better best it's games phenomenal. so far, too. Yeah. He's, he's been, and they, they go for 538 too. They don't know what they're talking about. So, uh, yeah, Brugman <laughs> is fantastic. Puj is fantastic. Puj. They have restored order. The combination of not just Brugman and not just Puj, but Vasquez in there. I mean, it's a telepathic understanding. Some of the one twos, the balls they are playing, it's phenomenal stuff. It's off the charts. We haven't seen that. Right. And it, that, that's what I mean why I'm so excited because you see that combination play. It's great. There's some dynamism, creativity, attack, and it gives us hope. You know, we want to see that. So it's a lot of fun to watch. And um, yeah, but defensively, there, there are some issues. And, you know, obviously not the, you know, the polished diamond, but certainly, you know, much more better positives than negatives. Yeah, it feels that way. By the way, two dollar super chat from what the saying uh, for Ricky Pooch's, uh, uh I'm going to say it wrong. I always say it wrong. So just. Just know right. that I'm trying. It's it's the G word, um, and I always say it wrong. And ev this is the part where I sit there and go, "No, this is the wrong way to say it." And then I'm going to say it, okay. but I, like I start flipping it. Uh, it was Ricky Pooja's. You can do it. Uh, can do it. Goloso. Golo Golasso, Golasso, Go Go Golasso. The second one. Okay, Golasso. Okay, I'm, I'm done. Golasso. That's it. That's it. People are now going to start just flooding the super chat with like I mean, for god's sake if you say pooch you can say golasso you would think i would be able, it's just one of those words that we don't get along with i don't get along with it's like every time i see it i can spell it yeah. you know but i can't say it um it's the one word i'm a kevin baxter on you know it's like you know ibrahimovic uh you know what what kevin what did you say um, so well, anyway, well, Kevin will never be a speech therapist. Uh, <laughs> I think he needs to stick to the, to the printed word. Yes, 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 yes. Um, so no, I thought that was, you know, I, I think you're right. We, we haven't talked about Ricky yet. Let's talk about Victor first and wow. putting Victor and Ricky together. Uh, you had, uh, you had the Barcelona kids together. Yeah. Uh, kids. They understand each other. <laughs> kids, the ability to move the ball through the center of the field to draw defenses towards them, exploit spaces quickly switch the field, uh, calmly find outlets for each other, and then outlets out wide. The fact that, and we talk so much about like Mark Delgado doing this, and Delgado still injured uh, from what we know and did not make the trip to Toronto. Um, but we talk about Mark Delgado and Vanny calls him like the, the time creator, right? He creates time for everybody else because he plays mm -hmm. the ball so quickly. Ricky and Victor do that too. And it, uh, it's a small sample size because obviously the first time we've sort of seen them really play next to each other. But they seem to um, they seem to make each other better players too, and that's something that I think is really important going forward. I know Victor Vasquez getting up in age, um, and I, I know he this it could be the last hurrah in a lot of different ways for him in terms of playing. But it's sort of like just give him one more shot at some of this stuff and putting him next to a twenty three year old and in, in Ricky Pooch, it, it there's there's something about it that just. It feels right. It's like it's like you know your good pair of jeans he put on that just feel like comfortable. That's what it feels like a comfortable pair of jeans in that midfield right now. Well, they speak the same language. They come from the same school. I mean, you know, and Victor predates you know Ricky at La Masia by a number of years, being thirty five and Ricky being twenty three. They they play the same football. Yep. Brugman understands that. There's an understanding. They play the same football. They know exactly what they're going to do. They know how to play. They play the same style. 
Mark, Marky, Mark, Marco, whatever. Del Mark. <laughs> Mark. He plays a different style of game, and right. he's fantastic at what he does. He makes powerful runs. He brings steel. He can you know, surge that midfield forward in that number eight role. But when you talk about combination playing, combining like that, I think that understanding, we really saw that. I, something I really got excited about, you know, watching the combination play, which led to the goals and, and led to some of the brightest moments of play. So, and, and that's something just – patterns of play are hard to establish in Major League Soccer, Joss, I think, because there's so much change year to year. And you compare it to other teams throughout the world where they have, you know, there's always comings and goings, but they have a core that's in place. Right. We, we don't really have that a lot in Major League Soccer. You know, I mean, it, you can have like 10 or 11 players change in a year. If you had that overseas in a big team, that would be massive upheaval, you know, and cause consternation and, and all kinds of discombobulation and people wouldn't know which weather. And that's what's made Barcelona, by the way, so successful over the years. And they've established those patterns of play with those people that have learned this throughout that's what we're beginning to see, people speaking the same language. So it's hard to do that. To see that in MLS, I don't see it too often. I saw glimpses of it there, and I got excited right. about it. It was it, so fun. This game was a blast to watch. It, it was. a blast for me to call, and I'm thankful to Galaxy to let me do it and, 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 and call it. I had a blast calling it. And, it's fun football, and this game was a heck of a lot more fun than the game in New England, right? It was. It wasn't a grind out one, right? This is this is yeah. there. There was chances for 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 the beautiful game to play, right, and that type of thing. Yeah. By the way, uh, a ten dollars super chat from Jacob. Jacob says uh, this may be weird, but makes sense in uh, in his head. He says, uh, "Watch Ricky's legs when he runs. Instead of the norm front to back swing, he has a wild flailing as he changes directions on a dime. It must be so hard to defend. It is that like low center of gravity. Thank for the super chat, Jacob. By the way." Um, it is that low center of gravity type of thing, right? I mean, I think it's Bambi on ice. Like, you know, <laughs> I mean, it's, it's just that baby deer kind of thing, but the kid's a player. I right. Mean, I, I don't know what Barcelona's doing. I don't know what they're thinking. The kid is a player. And right. It, it's, it's evident. And, and there, there's stuff that we don't know that's going on between, you know, him and Javi and him and the coaching staff. And, you know, whether Ricky had an attitude or someone had a chip on their shoulder, you piss someone off in the higher ups. Right. You're, you're on the outs, whatever. It's politics. I don't care. He can play. He can and he's play. showing and he wants to play. That's and he likes playing and he's enjoying himself. When we, I mean, it is so refreshing to have that now, just just to have that, regardless of the results and what's going on, to have that type of football is fantastic. I love it. Greg's been been hinting at sort of the don't underestimate the enthusiasm that somebody like like Ricky Pooch brings to the team. Like, mm -hmm. Don't underestimate what that does for everybody else, because if you looked at Ricky, Ricky scoring that goal, first of all, amazing goal, such a great goal. Um, it's all right. I, the, yeah, I know. So, so let me let me set you to the stage. Uh, I, I, whenever I watch the games at home, I usually sit down if they're on Spectrum. I sit down in in the living room, and usually my son is climbing all over me. My wife is sitting next to me, and I'm sitting there just typing away, doing my Twitter, and I don't make any noises, and I'm just like the whole deal. And uh, my son saw Bernadeschi score the penalty kick. And he was like, goal, which is the first time he's done that. And my wife was like, no, 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 it's the wrong team. I'm like, let him celebrate goals. It's fine. You know, this is, it's fine. We'll, we'll, we'll get there. Whole deal. We'll he'll eventually figure out which team he wants to like support. I'm not going to force anything. He's not going to be a Toronto fan. Everybody can chill. Um, so he was doing that. And so everybody's like quietly sort of playing, like doing their own thing towards the end of the, the game. Right. And I'm watching. And as Ricky starts making that run, I was like typing and I stopped and I was like, oh, and I said, oh, out loud, right? I was like, oh. And then when he hit it, I was like, oh, my goodness, right? And I screamed. And I don't scream. And it was just like so shocking because I'm like, that? The pearl clutcher. He doesn't make, by his own admission, it's been a while. He said this after the game. It's been a while since he shot something from outside the box and it went in, basically. He said he said it was probably have to be with like Barcelona B somewhere that he was playing and it went in. But then to see the reaction afterwards as well not just from him but from everybody um it's there's something there's something there 100 percent. by the way gary gave us a five dollar super chat said the second attempt uh by myself was spot on thank you for the five dollar super chat appreciate that um ten dollar super chat from spqr professor i believe uh fantastic podcast always learn so much but josh you need to set a time before the game say an hour or an hour and a half before when you are at the pupusa truck to say hi to those who listen regularly you know i meet at halftime Every halftime, I am downstairs at the bottom of the press box. I am there, and and there's a group of regular people who come over, and we usually discuss the game at halftime. So if you'd like to do, come over and do that, that's that's I'm I'm there. 
Uh, it's at the top of section 108. I'll tell everybody. It's at the top of section 108 at the bottom of the press box stairs. So the press box stairs come down. I just wait and give me a second to close up at halftime, maybe grab my cookie uh, and then walk down the steps and I will be there uh, to, to see everybody. So you're more than, and thank you for the $10 super chat. Certainly appreciate it. Um, so we're doing that. Um, and then we have a $5 super chat to follow that up, um, from Raphael who says, how much of an impact do you guys think, uh, Caceres will have on the back line? Mm. So Question. LA galaxy announced today, Caceres is available for selection on Sunday. So he has his visa. He is ready to go. He hasn't played in a while, Christian. Uh, this is not a guy who has played a game, I think, in the last four months. So, you know, I'm sort of part of me is like, do you play him? Do you not play him? How does that work? Um, I also think that Greg Vanny likes to have a five man back line on occasion whenever he thinks that wingers are a problem and getting on the outside is the way to stop them. Sporting Kansas City has wingers that are problems and ways to and things that you need to do to try to stop them with Johnny Russell on one and Sal- Salawi on the other side. And so there's 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 things there that possibly line up for a five man back line. The Galaxy probably have the personnel without Caceres to do it. Having said that, if you put him into there as a center back, you, you can kind of protect him in a five man back line. Um, you know, even if he's not totally up to game speed, I just don't, there's seven games left for the LA galaxy. It's really hard for me to be like, let's start tweaking things as there's all this momentum going. So I don't think he's going to start. I do think you might see some game time, especially if the galaxy are winning and it's coming down to the last like 15 minutes of a game or something like that. I think Caceres definitely could, could, could go in. So anyway, that's, that's my thoughts. It's a weird signing, isn't it? I mean, mean, I think you guys said it where you were talking about last week where it's so weird to see the transfer market heat up so intensely after the deadline yeah but, yeah yeah it but is when a player like caceres uh, caceres caceres you 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 do it you're better than me you're better. i get corrected on I, i'm channeling my any inner vicky mccarta yes you should she would she was correcting <laughs> no, me I, on it I, so I mean, yes I've seen, he played play, he played for one of my most beloved teams in italy and in, in fiorentina for a while but my name is named at juventus so i'm very familiar with him and he's a utility back he can play anywhere across the back line left to front uh, left to right, excuse me. I uh, get you know, and playing a three back system um, primarily as a as a fullback, and so and can spell players like a Gasper or or Raw Edwards or or you know or even and in Julian or push Julian higher up. Yeah. And it, so there there is an option. So it does again flat flexibility. Good signing. I think it was fifty thousand dollars in terms of uh, gam or jam. I yeah, know. it is. You're right. You're correct. That yeah. was that was to. Um, so, it, it had to go for the international slot. That was that was so the reason. I mean, a player of that quality, and he, you know, he he's got the bit between his teeth, so he's got a, you know, an incentive to play because he wants to make the Uruguayan World Cup squad coming up, and you know, in a matter of a couple months. Um, God, almost a month and a half. Excuse me. So yeah, I think it's a great signing, and it brings solidity in in terms of you know someone goes down. It's almost. Do we have too many defenders? You know, because <laughs> yep, the now, answer maybe Nick DePew. Yeah, that you know, there is the answer is yes. Well. That yes, the Galaxy have too many defenders, but also yeah. do they have enough quality? And the pr- answer probably is no, right? Yeah. And so that'll that'll be me. I'll say they don't have enough quality. And mm-hmm. so if that's the case, you could plug him in. Now, uh, chat room correct. He is not technically a center back by his default position. He's no. a right. He's a right back by the default position, um, or I an call, outside I call back. Utility, Josh. He, yes plugs holes across the back and that's and vanny said as much and vanny said that he could play in a five-man back line he could play like the right center back position mm-hmm. right which is why we say in a five-man he could play a center back that's why i was making that that type of thing so um i really think that uh the galaxy uh look first of all i mean just uh wrapping up toronto and seeing what it is ricky Puj, all that stuff it was i listen four points for me and i said it was going to be orgasmic if they got four points because honestly going before this i was like zero points Zero points. I can see zero points on this road trip. Uh, road trips are hard. New England's a hard place to play. Yes, the yeah. pressure was mounting, but have we seen the Galaxy react to the pressure before? And a lot of times it's been negative. Like mm-hmm. games where they had chances to do things, to advance their cause for the season, they have fell flat. Yeah. And and certainly in terms of string results together, we haven't seen much of that. Okay, so now again, four games unbeaten, right? Two wins, two draws. That's not horrible. Four points on the road, even though everybody wants to say could have been six points. Absolutely could have been six points. But there's there's two things that give me some hope is the consistency in springing some of these results together, Christian. But it's mm-hmm. but there, the caution here is they gave two points away against Seattle and they gave two points away against Toronto. You can't mm-hmm. give those points away. But I enjoy the fact that instead of getting zero points, those were both 
two point. Those were two points out of those out of those. That's something that keeps the ball rolling. Sometimes when you don't play good, a draw is good enough, right? And against Seattle, there were moments of really good play and really bad play. And to be able to come out of that with a point, probably pretty good. Same thing with Toronto. Absolutely dominate the game. And I know Greg was disappointed. I actually expect him to be a little happier than he was whenever he showed up uh, to the post game. And I, I should probably know better than that. Just just in terms. He was complimentary of everybody he played. He was complimentary of the style. He was obviously critical of their sometimes their lack of finishing or finding that final ball and of uh, Raheem Edwards. And, and he goes, that penalty kick can't happen. So he was those things. But four mm-hmm. points does a lot for this team. I know, I know that we're going to sh- see that they drop out of the playoffs. Right now, they're underneath the playoff line. But don't pay attention to that right now. Usually I am. I'm like, pay attention. Don't pay attention to right now. Uh, Portland's in a different. Yeah, Portland's in a different. Portland has five games remaining. The Galaxy have seven games remaining. Yeah, we've got like at least a couple games at hand. I mean, one or two on on our probably You can take a look at this pair. But one thing I want to say. Yeah. The Galaxy a month ago would have not drawn that game. Right, They would have wilted. Correct. Uh, And a second thing. We were talking about Ricky Pooj and all of his limelight and all his technical ability. The strength that that kid has, totally underrated. People thinking he's a lightweight. He can't do it. He even alluded to it to himself. Where he says, my teammates were challenging me. I can't score outside the penalty area because they don't think I'm strong enough. I saw him tracking back and winning balls yep. as much as I saw Brooklyn winning balls in that game, I, yep. which completely floored me. And Bar- I, Barcelona I, fans warned us about, they were like, hey, listen, he doesn't play defense. And I'm like, which, which which guy are you not talking to? Which because yeah. it's not it's not Ricky Pooj because yep. Ricky Pooj plays defense. I've seen him great again, and I, I I think I made this joke on Twitter, which was you know everybody said hey give him time to adjust to Major League Soccer, give him he's not going to save the LA Galaxy yeah. right. Those were the things that we were saying. Give him time, he's not going to save the LA Galaxy. And I think my tweet said those things, and then said never mind, <laughs> right? And it's like yes. Do we want to overreact? Remember, we overreacted last week when, when on the last show, whenever he had that ridiculous pass that split the yeah. defense and the whole day. And you're like, oh my god, nobody makes that pass. Like I haven't seen a pass like that from an LA Galaxy yeah. player in years. The whole deal. Now he scores a goal like that in a give and go, and like sort of you know this bounce and this this thing. By the way, got a little lucky. The ball came off a Toronto player and bounced right mm-hmm. to him, and he was able to take it. But all those things, Christian. Uh, he looks the part. He plays the part. Um, except whenever he come come. Except whenever he comes into the press conference room and he's a Disney character. Other than that, he's. <laughs> I love. I love him. He's great. He's great. But he's like. I'm like. Who is this little boy who's in here? Because he just. He has this youthful. He seems so young whenever he comes into yeah. the press conferences. He's like five two, but like five four with a pompadour. <laughs> right. Right. That's I why mean, the hair sticks up. He's got to act like he's taller. He's, he's not a big guy. But yeah. But I mean. But the the balls he was winning. I mean, I. I understand the criticism, and, and that's a that's a vague generalization when you talk about Barcelona players unable to win balls like that. Right. That's the kind of the general criticism that they're they're soft, they play tiki taka, and they can pass it, but they can't get stuck in. He got stuck in. He won games. He won balls. I mean, he was in it in those duels as much as Brugman was, and I, I and I couldn't believe it. And it, I was contagious because we saw Douglas Costa dropping. Back. Yep. Yep. So he's doing that. He's like, oh, wait, I got to do my part as well. So there's that kind of like, you know, exponential kind of side effect to, to what he's doing with that. So it's not just all about the glitz and glamour and everything that he has, which he does have. And I'm not going to try and, you know, you know, shower him in champagne, but, you know, give the guy his credit. I mean, uh, can you think of a, a better showing in the last, you know, the first two or three games of your major league soccer career? And I was saying, and a lot of people are going, oh, this is hyperbole. But this is a game changer in terms of Major League Soccer signings, where you yes. have a player that's in the prime of his career. And Ricky Pooj, I don't know if people will know this, he was supposed to be the next big thing. You know, he was supposed to be the next Vini. He was supposed to be, you know, the next Andres Iniesta, which he, that was the main character he was likened to. And you can see the similar characteristics. For whatever reason, it, it went south at Barcelona. So right. now you can see why. This kid, he can play. He's got a great attitude. Um, and he's tougher than you think. And, and he, he looks like a Disney character, but... He, he, he doesn't play like one. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he came in, he, he, he took his licks, he bounced right up. Yep. I mean, he, you know, he took a couple of shots to the head, Yep. Uh, justifiably so, which I thought, you know, escaped the referee. Ted Uncle, I thought, kind of had a shocker in a couple of occasions. Multiple, um, yes. So yeah, but more credit to him. And he, he showed me an edge and an out. And to me, that echoes the commitment that he wants to do this. He wants to do it for the team, but he knows, too, that this is his career right now. He is now at the last chance to prove himself. He is taking 
things uh, you know, within his own right and, and going forward as much as he can. It, all credit to him, and it's contagious. So it's it's great to see it. And I'm, I'm surprised about the edge that he's brought to the game. I know he had the technical ability and, and the vision and the passing and all the glitz and the glamour and the tiki-taka. The kid, he's hard. He can play. He gets stuck in. Yeah, you can see it. Um, by the way, I thought Kevin Cabral had that 95th minute winner. I thought I thought that. I don't. Why'd you listen, bring that one up? <laughs> I don't because now I I have yet to see an actual replay. I have yet to see an actual replay of that play. And whenever the, I do get the one freeze frame that they provide, which is way 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 behind the ball, he doesn't look offside. Mm. And I'm sitting there going, if there was one guy who needed the game winner. Yep. And and by the way, for the Galaxy to get a game winner out of that too, to steal it in that particular case, I thought they had it. Um, the flag came up immediately. The AR has the better view on that. I'm not going to say they got it wrong, but I'm saying from the one frame that I got that is way, way, way behind that play. It is a like 45 degree angle from you know where we should be looking down the line. I thought Cabral had it. Um, and I thought Dayon had it. I thought I thought they played it perfectly. I thought they timed it perfectly. I thought there was nothing that Toronto could do. Um, but it didn't it didn't count. So it is what it is. Um, let's get to the points here. Uh, just again to look. If you look at just the last, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven games, the LA Galaxy have taken points in all but five, all but two of those games. So five games they got points in. Absolutely. We talked about the need to constantly pick up points. They're doing that. Got three against Atlanta, three against Vancouver, one against Seattle, three against New England, one against Toronto. They are now sitting at 38 points. They are 10 points away from what we have targeted at 48 points as what we think the, the line will be around 48 points. We actually think 538 thinks it might be 45, um, which would be about three points. The Galaxy are on pace to make the 48 points. 10 points needed, seven games remaining, less than half the points basically on the, that you need. So there's 21 points. They need 10. There are some winnable games coming up. There are some difficult games coming up. I do not expect the LA Galaxy to go undefeated through the rest of this year. I think one of the hardest games they're going to play, Christian, is the next one coming up because yep. Sporting Kansas City didn't play a midweek game, and it's going to be hot. And the Galaxy got back this afternoon, more or less, maybe even into the evening today from Toronto. So they will go through a walkthrough on Friday morning that is pretty light, probably pretty jovial. They'll be throwing the ball around with their hands and moving around, maybe tossing footballs, that type of thing. It's that type of work day before they go through some tactical stuff and then they will do another walkthrough on Saturday for a game on Sunday. There's no training between this game. It's just a matter of keeping the legs limber and everybody feeling and sort of understanding the tactical uh, points that are that are coming up. Um, one of the other things I want to get to is Ricky Pooch. We talked about it, his first uh, team of the week nomination here, so he gets put in the midfield there. Uh, Douglas Costa made the bench as well for his outstanding play. I think it was widely sort of looked at over uh, across the league um, that Douglas Costa came to play against Toronto. Um, and I think on the whole, the LA Galaxy played very, very well. Uh, Christian, if we're looking at the LA Galaxy just in terms of where they stand, uh, from this point last year and through all the other years, the LA Galaxy currently tied with 2021's 38 points through 27 games. We have talked about the 2021 LA Galaxy not winning any games down the stretch, and so there would be a chance for this LA Galaxy team, this 2022 team, to be better than or best the 2021. Remember, 2021 finished with 48 points. Um, so they were sort of right in there. So from the same spot, the 2021 team, who was not good down the stretch, picked up 10 points. From the same spot, the LA Galaxy are in now with seven games remaining. Uh, they have 21 possible points. They are looking also to get into that 48-point range, which I think will will do them a lot of good. Um, yeah, does that, does that make it? I mean, does it feel good that in 2018, the LA Galaxy missed the playoffs, and through 27 games, they had 38 points? And in 2021, the LA Galaxy had... 38 points through 27 games and they missed the playoffs. And in 2022, the LA Galaxy have 38 points and do they make the playoffs? Do they not? It's, it's different. It's different this year, just in terms of how they're playing and the number of teams, but it feels not comforting to know that, that they're in that same group, right? Well, the standard is like, an, you know, I mean, the standard basically being the, the table is like an overall view. So you're taking, you know, form all the way back to, to March, but in current form right now, I mean, everyone will tell you in major league soccer, you know, it matters what you do after August. So that that's why I'm so optimistic because, you know, f you know, rewind back a year ago. We were faltering at a great start. And, you know, and it just went absolutely south. 
you know, in the last, you know, 10 or 11, 12 games, it was abysmal to be, right. to, to be frank. And then, of course, you know, they, they had themselves in pole position and they let it slip between their fingers and it all went, you know, south with, with Houston, who ironically is our last game in Houston on October 9th. Right. Um, so I, I feel better about the firm and hitting. It's all about when you hit your form in, in Major League Soccer. And we all know that. What's interesting to me is I look to this table, Josh, and, you know, we got SKC for me out of the running. You know, they're, they're now find themselves ten points off the pace. So, but they are the playing with freedom, and they, they beat. They gave us a good whipping. You know, putting four past us about a month ago. Right. In, in Kansas City, but then we take on and all the other teams that are that. You've got Nashville in Nashville, yep. Vancouver in Vancouver. Yep. At home to Colorado. Mm-hmm. Okay, you've got a game, a weird one against San Jose, the reschedule game, and then RSL in Houston. All of those teams. Minus maybe the fact of San Jose and maybe it's kind of Houston. All of them are going to be six pointers, direct yep. rivals in that race for that final set. So we're talking about basically finals, you know, for maybe five of the last seven games. Yep. That that's the beauty of Major League <laughs> Soccer. I love it. Yeah. It, it's got all its fault, its craziness, and the lack of merit in the regular season. It's name me one other league where you've got five finals in the last seven games. And I'm not trying to be rah, 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 but it's, it's true. It's fantastic. And we were, we're taking on Nashville who finds themselves, you know, what, four points above us in the table. And then we take on a Vancouver team that's four points below us. Yep. We're, and we're one point adrift of, of Portland. So who's what they're going to do. And then Colorado, in you know, the best team in the West last year, you know, they're not, they're what, six points out of the pace. They're probably out of the running. It, but, it feels like it, but yeah, yeah, who knows, right? You can't tell. Yeah, RSL. And then yeah. there's the old RSL kind of, you know, Jack in the box wild card. So, that that's I mean I, I if you don't ask me for prediction please don't ask <laughs> me for prediction because I'm gonna get it wrong as I usually do as we all do yeah to, so to me that 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 is the thing that remains to be seen and whereas we were looking at the same type of scenario in 2021 mm-hmm. I was kind of down the dumps about it. I'm like, yep oh, we're not gonna do well we're not playing well we're not coming together we're not scoring goals. You know, we're, we're giving the ball away. And now, look at what we're doing now. We're hitting the form. We got these midseason signings. That's the big difference. We didn't have that in 2021. We didn't have that lift in midseason. I mean, I, I thought we've gone stale, personally, in like June and July. We're not stale anymore. Nope. Nope. Feels feels like new. Uh, speaking of the standings, you look at the LA Galaxy sitting in eighth. I told you not to panic about that. I'm going to take this table that shows the LA that shows Portland in seventh and the LA Galaxy in, eight, in eighth, and I'm going to switch it mm-hmm. to points per game. And whenever you do points per game, the LA Galaxy yeah. have 1.41 and Portland has 1.34. Now, points per game are not a guarantee of points that you're going to get with games in hand. But we told you Portland has five games remaining and that is it. The LA Galaxy have seven games remaining, two games in hand on Portland. So at this particular point, pay no attention to Portland. You don't need to. Yeah. If you take care of business, they will finish below you. Right. So that's sort of, you know, that's my one takeaway from this is just don't pay attention. A lot of times I'm like, hey, you're above the line. You want to see that? That makes you feel good. Don't let being below the line and giving away possibly two points in Toronto, which I still think is a great result. I thought it was a great result getting a, a two two draw. Right. That that's 100%. fine. Yeah, it's a great result. Don't let that get you down about not being in the playoffs right now. And if you're a Galaxy fan, throw that out. Look at the points per game. You are sitting above Portland. Take care of business. Do Handle your business. And you were saying, you know, it depends on when you get hot. Uh, my good friend, uh, Eric, the Portuguese hammer, Vieira, would say, don't peak too soon. Galaxy seemed to me maybe, possibly, be peaking at the right time. This game coming up, not an easy one. I want to get to some rumors um, before we get uh, into the Sporting Kansas Julian. City game. Yeah, Julian Araujo uh, was by Fabrizio Romano earlier this week uh, pegged to Barcelona. Barcelona was interested in him, looking at some other players as well. Um, what ended up happening is they went and set, signed uh, Barcelona Hector uh, Bellerin, right, from from uh, Arsenal. Um, and so now that is their answer to the right back. Now, in this, it says Julian Araujo from LA Galaxy deal now collapsed after further contacts. Really interesting that this tweet came out after Greg Vanny was asked after the game about Julian Araujo and going to Barcelona. This is what Greg Vanny said. Uh, they, they asked where it stands, and he says it doesn't stand anywhere. To my knowledge, I don't know if the, those conversations are real or anyone's happening, but for me, Julian is here, and he'll be finishing the season with us, and we keep moving forward. So I haven't heard anything to the contrary. So, if I can put on my speculation hat 
Um, Put on either Fabrizio or Romano, right? like, air helmet. So, I mean, Fabrizio doesn't get this Here stuff. Here we go. For, yeah, for, yeah, Fabrizio doesn't get this stuff wrong. So he said that the, there were contacts. Greg Vanny's saying they're not right. contacts. I imagine that there were contacts. I imagine somebody at Barcelona, of which they just had contact with all the Ricky Pooch stuff, right? Easy. Somebody at Barcelona called the LA Galaxy and said, maybe we're interested in Julian Araujo. And the LA Galaxy said, maybe we're interested. What are you thinking? Right, that type of thing, and maybe the number came back, and the galaxy were like, "That's not even close," and I don't know why we're even talking about this anymore. Right? It could be stuff like that. It could be very preliminary. I reached out, I sent an email, and they sent an email back, and that's as far as it ever got, and it went away. Mm -hmm. Greg Vanny, on his part, also, this let's again theorize. This is a speculation room that we're currently in. This is rumors, rumors we speculate on. Um, the speculation could be that Greg Vanny heard that the LA Galaxy possibly the, that maybe Yovan or Chris or or Michael Michael Stevens were sitting there and they were possibly doing introductory emails with Barcelona about Julian Araujo and Greg Vanny was like, nope, not right now. You we can talk about this in the winter time, but I need Julian Araujo right where he is because yeah. we're making a playoff push and he's going to be a part of it and he's staying with the team and so no. They were not having this conversation right now. And as a coach who is trying to save his job as well, let's be very honest. If he doesn't make the playoffs, maybe there's questions about Greg Vanny and staying. I don't think there should be. Other people disagree with me. That's fine. But if you're Greg Vanny, then you need to have the players that you have been working with all year in order to do this. And you're, and you're adding pieces. You're not subtracting pieces, right? Mm -hmm. And so to me, that's probably one of those scenarios probably took place where it was just very basic, very introductory. It never went very far. Or Vanny put his foot down and said, not right now. And we can talk about this in the winter. And quite honestly, for Julian Araujo, I don't think he should move right now either. If he's trying to make the Mexico World Cup team, the best place for him is a place where he's going to get guaranteed minutes right now. That's that's in Major League Soccer. I know people would say that Tata would like it if he did it on a bigger stage. That's true. But going to a new team right now, trying to fit in where you don't know the game plan, you don't know how everything works, a lot tougher than just sticking with the LA Galaxy through the World Cup. And whether or not he even makes it is a question. But I don't think that's good for Julian right now. All of these offers, all of these things will be available in the wintertime. And I think perhaps that's when Julian goes. Uh, for, yeah, there, there's so much to unpack in this whole thing. Where, where Okay, one, Julian has a history with this team and he was with he for went for went his for go for go yeah. <laughs> his senior year in high school in Lompoc to study and play with Barcelona in Casa Grande Arizona with their academy they know him he's been on the radar they have come out and said that they would have signed him had they worked out the visa and the work regulations but he was too young he wasn't 18 so right. they couldn't bring him over to La Masia they wanted to bring him trust me and, and then they saw that the talent, so they've kept an eye on him and he's not someone that's come under the radar. You throw into the mix now where they've had this contact with the recent signings of Ricky Puj and you say, hey, wait a minute, what about that kid that was playing for our academy, you know, about in 2017 and 2018, who absolutely, you know, lit it up to the point where we wanted to bring him over to right. Catalonia and they're like, hmm, okay. But to credit, Vanny's credit, he's not gonna, he's not gonna let him go and nothing's gonna happen in the last seven or eight games of the season because they absolutely need him but Julian does have a case that, you know, long-term, you know, career, I could see him making the move. Um, it's all, you know, conjecture at th this point. Nothing's going to happen. Uh, the window is closed in Europe right now. Um, it did heat up and get a little credence because of the situation with Barcelona losing Serginho Dest, right. shipping him off to AC Milan. That played into the fact where, hey, we can bring in a Julian Arau, would slot him right into his position. I don't think Julian Arau is a Barcelona player. For me, right. I don't think he can play. I don't think he suits that style. Um, I think he's more of a, a player that bombs on and gets further and, and, and no discredit to him. I just don't think it's the best fit for him personally in terms of his playing style. Um, and they ended up signing, uh, I, can't, I can't remember the name of the, the defender from Chelsea, but he ended up going the other way with the Aubameyang signing. So that kind of solved that problem. And But that was one of the solutions to the problem for Barcelona. And that's why you had those rumors and when you're a club like Barcelona, you can dictate the flow of this chat, and that's why it made its way in. So you dangle the LA Galaxy, you're like, you know, you're dangling a carrot in, in, in front of every other agent and every other rumor mill out there. So um, I'm, there probably wasn't even conversations, but Julian, I'm sure, you know, has one eye on Barcelona. He knows their system. He knows their methodology. 
If I were him, I'd want to play for them as well. I mean, right. it's a brilliant uh, setup. He is coming in, and he's coming into his own right now. I, I think reestablishing himself uh, as, as the Julian Arana we saw him in 2021. Right. No. No. Different. Yeah. I think with the setup is a little different because with, with Raheem Edwards, and I've said this before, it, it alters his role a little bit. And he has not been the bombing fullback that we've seen linking up. Now, Edwards has taken a back seat the last six or seven games, right? We've seen more of him getting forward. We've seen Julian for, getting forward and, and linking up with the attack and make those overlapping runs and stretching those defenses. That's where he is great. I think that's his the strength of his game. Delivers a really good ball in. So um, as far as his future, I'm surprised that he hasn't gone already, to be, right. to be quite frank. I thought right. the iron was hot, and I, I predicted falsely, and I hold my hands up, and I was dead wrong. I thought he was going to be gone by last January. Yeah, me too. Uh, I, I thought there was a chance, certainly, with how well he I played. I think his head was gone there, too. Am I wrong on that? Or? It, it feels like it. I mean, listen, there's been some regression here by Julian Araujo yeah. this year, and 100%. we've seen that. Now, that being said, um, you know, I, I think I got into a discussion on Twitter about this, that we were talking about Julian Araujo, and they were like, oh, he just had an okay game against Toronto. I go, I thought he had a great game. He had Insigne yeah. on his side. On his side, yeah. He mostly shut him down. Yes, he got shot. Listen, Insigne is going to get shots off. I just I hate to break it to you. Again, defender, no defender is ever perfect. That's not how it works. Did you see uh, Walker Zimmerman get bodied by Giassi Zardis in the uh, Colorado-Nashville game? <laughs> Walker Zimmerman's one of the best defenders in major league soccer he's one he's a u.s men's national team defender and jossie zardis p played him like a ragdoll it happens every once in a while jossie's jossie's a good striker um that can take advantage of little mistakes and walker zimmerman made a little mistake and he got punished those type of things but i said julian Rao played really well really when you look at it he probably should have had a game-winning assist if you got cabral or chicha to bite on the line there now i will say this in their defense christian and maybe maybe it's too optimistic Julian usually cuts that ball back, right? That's usually where he plays the ball. He won't whip it across the front like that. But had either of them decided to make that run, it was a goal. Because it was just, well, I mean, I don't know about Cabral. Because Cabral can miss him from six inches away. Josh, but, I, I've been pulling my hair out about this. <laughs> you make the near, you make the far. I, 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 I mean... It's, it was I, there. I, I just, I, I can't. I can't. I, I've been sitting there and I've watched it. And it, it, he... It was excellent fullback play. It was perfect. I mean, that that was, you know, top world-class fullback play from him. Got forward, got behind his mark, gets in, pulls it back from the byline, whips in a, you know, square ball at pace, make the run. Yep. And standing flat-footed yep. in front of the six-yard box? Nope. I, nope. I mean, I, it was, yeah. I, I, I was screaming and yelling, and then I was commenting on the games. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but that, that just... That, to me, that's striker one on one, and th I think that's where Kevin is struggling right now. He doesn't know where to make his runs, and we can get, we we you you could probably do a whole podcast on that. And I could. I'm not gonna hear him pick on him, but it it has to be better than that. It he just, does. Just he needs to, to be there. That, that's tap in. It is. We, you know, open. you know, the same thing happened in the first half too, because Costa yep. put in a ball that Chicha should have made a run towards the near post, mm -hmm. and that anybody, Grand Sir, was the, was the guy on the back post. If anybody makes that run, it's a tap-in again. I mean, yeah. Chicha, if Chicha gets to that ball, it's a tap-in. If Grand Sir gets the ball, it's a tap-in. They beat everybody. Costa unlocked yeah. the entire defense with the cross, and nobody was there. And cross here. Yeah. And away. So there, there, were, there were the chances. I think Greg said it really well where, you know, we, we had over 60%, or almost 60% of the possession, and, but we needed two worldies to win the game. Yep. What we shouldn't have it. Right. Needed those two worldies to win the game because we put ourselves in great build up play. That final pass was just not there. I mean, and it, the chances didn't really develop because of that final ball preceding the chance just wasn't there. So, whatever. I mean, we could sit there and beat a dead horse, but, you know, it is what it is. It is. Uh, let's get to the schedule here. LA Galaxy coming up in September. Uh, five games coming up. Uh, again, it starts on Sunday uh, against Sporting Kansas City. Uh, then it goes to Nashville, uh, away to Nashville. I'm going to give everybody a heads up right now, Christian. I, I need to give everybody a heads up because this is not like me, but I'm going to tell you, I will not be covering the Nashville game, that 1230 game. It is, it is my wife's birthday weekend. That is, we are... That's a shutdown zone. So I am I am not going to. Trust me, I will be back. I will still have shows. We will do all the... The schedule will stay the same. I just won't be live tweeting. I won't be in the press conference after. That's not going to happen. The 1230 time is not a good time for this particular weekend. It happens. I'm usually in most games. I'm not going to feel horrible about it. But just so you know, right off the top, 1230 game on September 10th. I will not be covering that game. Good. Glad we got it. Away to Vancouver. 
up at BC Place, up on the turf. Always a tough place to play. Four days later. Four days later, right? So a quick turnaround, right? Then three days later, uh, LA Galaxy hosts Colorado. Uh, then it's the international break of which the LA Galaxy will be playing the San Jose Earthquakes in the middle of. Wonder how many gap players the Galaxy will be missing. Maybe Chicharito will be with the Mexican national team, being that they have a whole bunch of injuries and he's in form. So maybe this is Dayon Jovalich's chance to shine against the San Jose Earthquakes, okay? Then there's just two games in October, and that's it. Uh, Decision Day comes up on uh, October 9th, and it is a 2 p.m. game at Houston. And I would hope that if you're the LA Galaxy, you have this wrapped up before that because you at least want to be you at least want to be guaranteed a playoff spot before you go to Houston because I don't care who you are uh, that's going to be a hot game because uh it's not cold in October it, it's not, it's usually not cold in October till like the end of October not the beginning of October so it's going to be hot it'll be humid it won't be fun it'll be 2 p.m. under the sun it's going to be all sort that's a, it's a thing of nightmares okay so have this wrapped up before that game and make it just about positioning Make sure you're in the playoffs already and that if you win that game, it's about positioning. Maybe the Galaxy played so well in all those other games, Christian, we're talking about possibly getting a home playoff game. All right? These are the things that need to happen coming up. All right? So that's your schedule. Mm. There's a lot of stuff coming. Um, it's going to be rapid fire. It's not going to be... This is not like the end of the season that sort of moseys its way forward, Christian. It is going to be uh, balls to the wall, as they say. Uh, hitting the... Hitting the... Uh, the What is it? The... Uh, the fire, the firewall, hitting the firewall. That's what I was trying to say. All the yeah, way through. Rubber, rubber will hit the road. You can throw out any cliche you want. I mean, it's so weird to think that this is how tight it was. I remember calling this game last night and go, the Galaxy had results gone their way. They claimed three points. They could have been in the top four, put themselves yep. in a pole position for hosting yep. home playoff games, right? Mm-hmm. Now they find themselves yep. outside the playoff line. Right. And then you've got, you find yourself, what, five points above 10th place. And those tenth place team, by the way, is one Seattle. Yeah, we know what they're capable of, even though Jao Paulo is out. So, yeah, I mean, God, it's just it's a crapshoot. And then in these games that we talked about, Nashville. I mean, it's a bummer going to miss that. That's going to be a grind fight. Dave Romney's not happy about you not being able to show up. I know. So. I know. It's okay. He'll 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 get over it. Um, let's get you ready for this game, Sporting Kansas City. LA Galaxy versus Sporting Kansas City coming up on September 4th. It's a Sunday. It's a 5 p.m. kickoff. I've heard that the temperature has dropped. We were looking at a 95-degree day during the kickoff, at 95 degrees at kickoff. Uh, now, apparently, 86. So we're we're getting nice. better. That's better. Maybe that maybe that, that cool ocean breeze is going to infiltrate. South Bay, right? Get that, get, that, get that wind blowing in there. So 5 p.m. Yeah. 5.08 p.m. is your TV start time. Now, uh, this game originally scheduled for Spectrum Sportsnet at LAGalaxy.com. It is still going to be on there, but TUDNA, Unamas, and on Twitter, also available for this game. So nationally televised and locally televised, it's on every single station that you could possibly find, uh, all of them in one. I just didn't have enough room in my graphic to put every single place this game will be. So for the locals, Spectrum Sportsnet, LAGalaxy.com, Joe, Kobe, Nikki will have that call. Um, what, are you doing the radio? You got the radio. I'm doing the radio. Right. Yeah, yeah. Doesn't bode well for us, right? With five other outlets. I was going to say, I don't, I don't know. I mean, you know, maybe somebody's at work and they can't, they can't turn on something they can watch. They can just listen. Yeah. So then that would be all yeah. you, dude. So I mean, we could be your sixth choice. You know, That's... <laughs> why not? I mean, you're my sixth. Wouldn't be my first time in my life. <laughs> you're, you're, you're my sixth choice as co-host. So you know, it, yeah, it makes some much. sense. <laughs> what, what do you know? Yeah, um, so I'm going to roll with it. Yeah, it is. Uh, it, it's a it's a good one. Um, LA Galaxy eleven eleven and five thirty eight points. Uh, you have uh, Sporting Kansas City eight fifteen and five twenty nine points. Uh, right now, the away record for Sporting Kansas City two nine and three for nine points. They've got two wins all year. They've got three draws. So five of their fourteen games that they have played, they have gotten results in. Uh, the LA Galaxy at home seven five and two twenty three points. So that's good. I just want to bring this up because we were talking about away games and sort of where the Galaxy are. Galaxy are four six and three on the road. That means seven of their thirteen games they've either won or gotten a draw in, and that is how you could pick up points in Major League Soccer. Um, try to steal the points on the road, and the Galaxy have actually done a pretty good job of that. Not great, but pretty good job. Uh, if you look at the all-time between these two teams, uh, it's 30, 27, and 19 for the LA Galaxy, a total of 109 points for the LA Galaxy, but 100 points for uh, for Sporting Kansas City. Also, the Kansas City Wizard, all that fun stuff. Um, eighth in the Western Conference for the LA Galaxy, 13th in the Western Conference for Sporting Kansas City, 14th in the Supporter Shield versus 26th in the Supporter Shield. The, it's... It's one of those things where you talk about records stretch back to, you know, February, 
right? The first game in February. Records stretch back that way. Mm-hmm. But you have to take a snapshot of what is going on with Sporting Kansas City, which is they have started a consistent lineup over the last four games. They've been getting results. They've been getting wins. The last five games, nine points for Sporting Kansas City, three wins, two draws. Uh, you look at the LA Galaxy, only eight points in the last five games, two, one, and two, right? So mm-hmm. you have to take these snapshots and understand where you're at. We talked about it already. Sporting Kansas City didn't play midweek. Now, they get to travel. Which is a which is a negative mark against them. They're coming from the center of the of the country. That's that's tough. They have ha- probably had a little more heat than we have, so maybe they'll be a little more used to it. But they won't have as many tired legs. I think Vanny did an okay job of rotating uh, some of the bigger positions that get a lot of running against yeah. Toronto, and so I think you're going to have somewhat fresh legs. But if you're talking about a game the Galaxy want to score early, this is a game the Galaxy want to score early very very badly because. It may come down to this being, uh, you know, a grinded out sort of ugly game because I don't think the legs are going to be there for the Galaxy. And I know the heat is going to zap the LA Galaxy, especially having played the two games already in the in the week. So somebody said, does the heat only affect the LA Galaxy? No, it doesn't. It affects Sporting Kansas City, too. But I'm telling you that for a team who didn't play on Wednesday, the heat will affect them less than the team that just played on a Wednesday and just got back, you know, we're on Thursday night, you know, Thursday afternoon. Yeah, and you're also looking at it to the point where, yes, it is home field, but, you know, basically the, the Galaxy are making the, a longer trip than Kansas City to get here and playing, you know, one more game in the midweek. So that, that puts them at a disadvantage. But, and also, too, one little asterisk here. The Galaxy haven't exactly been Lions at home. Their home form no. has been, you know, a bit to be desired. They need to reestablish that. I mean, you know, 23 points, 14 games, they, you know, that puts them, you know, I think amongst the bottom five or six yeah, it's not great. Yeah, yeah five team. losses, five losses at yeah. home so far yeah, this five year. Lo- yeah, fourteen games, five losses. I think seven wins. So yes. it, it's not convincing. It's not that much more better than the things on the road. So their home form, you know, it's kind of a carryover from last year. It's got to get better. Good way to turn the corner. Uh, Sporting Kansas City is playing with freedom right now. They don't care. It, the, the season is is kind of a pot shot for them right now. They right. Don't, they really don't care. So. And that, it's almost like a liberating feeling for them. They took it to us the last game. They got in behind, uh, exploited the wide areas. Jonathan Bond had a great penalty save, I think it was, on Johnny Russell, but really couldn't capitalize on that. So the Galaxy really, I think, with with the uptick and attack, I'd like to see them tighten things down, and they're going to have their work cut out from around those wide areas, you know, with Russell and, you know, Shallowy, whoever may be playing, you know, in those wide positions. Where, yep. We traditionally had problems with mo- with mobile attackers in wide areas. Um, wasn't the case on Wednesday night, right? With the likes of Bernadeschi and Insignia, who looked rather ordinary. So, you know, shout out to Gasper and a shout out to Araujo. Um, so yeah, I, 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 don't ask me for prediction, but I, I just don't know because it's almost like a wild card. But this team is playing with freedom, Sporting Kansas City, and as well as good a coach it, it, uh, Peter uh, Vermees is, you, you, you can never count them out. So it's not it's it's not going to be easy uh, if you can get a you know at least a point out of it. You're doing yourself a favor, and you're doing yourself a favor against a direct Western Conference rivals. But the Galaxy, look, I think they have three games left at home. Josh, am I wrong? Uh, yeah, three yeah. games, right? Because it's yeah. uh, you gotta win them. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. It is SKC, Colorado, and RSL. I mean, that that is, you can look to try to steal points against Vancouver and San Jose, right? I mean, yeah. th- those are your best chances to steal points. Nashville is going to be a ridiculously tough game. Vancouver is going to be a tough game. It's easier because it's yeah. in the time zone, but it's not not an easy game. Colorado, yeah, Colorado's never an easy team for the Galaxy to play. Altitude. Um yeah, well, that's at home. Sell that's a, that's at home. So so oh, sorry, you got right, right, yeah. yeah, you got Colorado and RSL both altitude teams that will be coming and traveling into into LA. So um, the San Jose game again, we talked about it. There's there's no gimmies here. Um, it's just that with the LA Galaxy and the way they're playing, Christian, I think you have to feel rather optimistic in in terms of how they're going to uh, going to sort of uh, attack this game. I. It, but here's my question. Yeah. Josh. Yes. I mean, we we got Delgado right. We we think. He's questionable right now. We don't know what his status is. I'm trying to go to training on Friday. I may get an update on Delgado whenever that yeah, happens. Yeah, so he, he's going to, obviously, he's going to be needed in the run-in, but in you know, a way things have gone in the last couple of games and, and the way that midfield is combined, do you bring him back in? And, you know, obviously in the midst of rotation with three games in the space of, what, you know, seven or eight days. Right. And rotation, even. so if he's fresh and ready to go, you got to think, He's probably in contention to be in the first eleven. Yep. He's you know very much a favorite of Greg Vanny and justifiably so. But you know, but the way that that midfield play, 
do you, do you who do you remove out of do you take a Vasquez? Vasquez. Yeah, Vasquez yeah. because you're worried about his turnaround, right? I yeah, mean but, yeah, but he played so well. He did, but know? he also played like eighty something minutes, right? I, I mean he was in there for a long time. The season. Yeah. Yeah, he was he was there for a while. So I don't know. It, it's it when you look at this, you know, s sort of in the yeah. If you look at it in the four three three, the Galaxy lined up similarly in Toronto with a four three three. Yeah. Um, so I don't know. I mean, Vanny could go back to that well and just change uh, some pieces. You could put Cabral in instead of Grant Sur, right? You could put Victor v Vasquez out and bring in Delgado. Um, mm -hmm. Bottom line is that it, Sporting Kansas City has some really game changers. Johnny Russell, yeah. you know, we talked about Salawi. Uh, Tommy has been playing very well um, on the yeah. wing and coming in. Uh, Roger. Agata yep. got two against us. Yep, Agata, uh, Roger Espinoza. Don't ever count him out, right? I think <laughs> their I think their big deal is that their defense is not as solid as it is, and I think yeah. Pulse Camp. This is similar to Toronto. Pulse Camp is not the best goalkeeper either, and he makes some mistakes. We we knew Bono was going to make some mistakes, and I think he did on the Costa goal, quite honestly, because mm -hmm. I I thought Costa didn't exactly put it in the corner. Um, it was it was in that general direction, but it wasn't in the corner. It was actually inside the goal by quite a bit, um, and Bono didn't see it. But I think Pulse Camp. That's another thing. Shots on goal, rebounds, those types of things you have to sort of press and push. I thought I've watched some of the games. I watched the the San Jose game um, that Sporting Kansas City just played, and they scored in the opening ten minutes, one nothing. That was the end of that game. Um, the, so so they scored in the opening. And by the way, very direct at times. Uh, mm -hmm. especially from Graham Susie, whenever he gets the ball, he likes to play the ball up and over the top and direct. And so galaxy players, it's about, you know, watching that back line dropping whenever you see those direct passes coming, um, or playing the offside trap correctly, however you do it. But, uh, all of these guys sporting Kansas city is not, it, it's, they're just, they're just not a horrible team that their yeah. results in the beginning of the season show. Um, and so I was talking to Ali, um, Ali Trost, I probably say her last name wrong, but she's the sideline reporter for Sporting Kansas City. And usually before the games, we go back and forth and talk about the team. So that way everybody knows what's what's going on. And she says that they're they've seemed like a different team in the last four or five games. Um, and playing so, with freedom. Yeah. Like you said, there's relatively little pressure. And if they're going to get back into it, which would be such a stretch. I don't I don't they you know, they have to all win the out. All, all the pressure in this game is yeah. on the Galaxy right now. They're in the playoff race. Sporting Kansas City on the road has nothing to lose right now. And they can come out and throw all caution to the wind. They're expected to lose this game. So that's what makes them so dangerous. And, and you know, we saw what they did last time. So I'm, I'm a little worried about this game. And, and those are the, the opponents you got to really fear at this point is you got to be sharp in your game. And you can, it's almost like a trap game. So it is. You can overlook yeah. it like, oh, look at this team. You know, they're what, second or third bottom of the Western Conference. They're out of it. They're not going to be any good. There's some good players in that team. They've had their fitness issues, and I'm not making excuses for their team. But when you encounter a team like that, it doesn't have anything to lose. They're fearless. They come at you. They'll run. They get in behind. Um, I'm interested to see what the fullback situation is going to be uh, on the left-hand side with Russell running at Gasper, or is it going to be Edwards? I mean, Edwards, or yeah. you, you brought it up earlier, the Casares five. coming in. Yep. You could see a tweak and it changes shape, like we saw with the three against New England, and yep. it could bring in the le the wing backs in. So. Nice to have that. I'm just really intrigued to see that because there's so many options available to, uh, to head coach Greg Vanny about this and how they approach this. And, you know, it's a dangerous opponent. It's, you know, it's like a wounded animal, so to speak. Yeah, they are. They're unpredictable. Uh, Galaxy haven't beaten Sporting Kansas City since uh, 2019. Uh, that was the 7-2 game uh, that uh, Ibrahimovic oh scored God, three yeah. goals. Legit had two. Corona and Antuna also scored. Uh, Sporting Kansas City last one in the away game, by the way, on July 9th against Montreal. That was the last time they won an away game. We looked at that away record. They are a different team away than they are at home, but they've been a different team in the last five games. And I think they've had like one away game during that time. And I think they actually won it. So, um, you know, looking at that and sort of trying to, to gauge how they're going to play. I don't know. This is, I think, you know, we're talking about predictions and how I, I by the way, I think I got the Toronto game, right? I think I predicted two, two. I, I, I said somebody needed to check the tapes. Cause I don't, I honestly never remember, but I'm pretty sure I got that right. Um, in this particular case, I think there's a part of me that wants to say the momentum, that the confidence, that the way the LA Galaxy were playing through the midfield against Toronto is somehow matched and it is created and that the Galaxy can go out there and score, you know, three first half goals and really put this game away and make Sporting Kansas City wish that they never got off the plane. I think that's going to be extremely difficult to do. I'm going to call this um, like a 2-2 draw again. I'm going to go 2-2 draw again. I want to see the Galaxy defense be better at home. Um, I just they, I don't have a bunch of uh, of confidence in them. Um, I think they can score goals. 
if they get the first goal, get, it's game on for the Galaxy. I really do think that they could they if if they do win the game, Christian, it's going to be like a two nothing win, like because they're going to be able to like grind it out and then exploit on the counter and those types of things. So it is all over the place. I could tell you that they could win this game, they could lose this game, they could draw this game. I see all those scenarios perfectly playing in here because there's so much sort of hanging in the air with all the traveling with all the different things. So it, it just it, it's it's a toss up. Flip a coin. You're going to be on the edge of your seats, unfortunately. Yeah, I mean, the Galaxy, they're not much for clean sheets lately. They haven't had one since, I think, the end of last month when they, they beat Atlanta and Carson. So it's been about six or seven games. That's been a much. They, they let opponents back into the game. It's never assured they, the problem's killing them off. It's, it's been better. But the way they've started games, I think in the last two or three games, much more improved, more responsibility, better possession in the midfield. So I'm, I'm going to go, I'm going to go with a 2 1 win for the Galaxy at home. I think they're going to score probably within the first half an hour, and that'll allow them to to bet in, build their confidence. The question is, can they see off a game when they're in control and kill off an opponent? I think that's the next evolution of this team. Yes, you know they, they've surpassed the, the the crappy starts. Right, they've surpassed the shooting themselves in the foot and giving balls away in stupid areas and to shoot themselves in the foot. Yeah, okay. The Raheem Edwards situation. Yes. Individual, and to that. individual mistake, right? right. Like when you we're look not, at that, yeah. Right. And we're not seeing like we used to, Jack. We were seeing it week in and week out. And it was like, it was driving me crazy. It was driving all of us crazy. But we're not seeing that to the extent we are. And we're not seeing that also facilitated by putting themselves in those positions to make those individual mistakes. That's eradicated. I think the next step is bossing a game from minute one to minute 90, but also when you're in control, putting your foot on the jugular and killing them off. And that's what you need. At this point in the season, how great would it be to see a decisive blowout victory? If they could do that, I mean, I think they're going to the playoffs regardless, but I think that would be a massive statement to make, but I still think they come out. I'm going to go 2-1 Galaxy. I like it. I like it. By the way, you talked about the Galaxy scoring first. Galaxy have scored first in their last four games. Last mm-hmm. four games in a row, the Galaxy have scored the first goal. Um, that yeah. and, and by the way, they haven't lost any of those games, right? That is key to the LA Galaxy. And that's Greg Vanny. That's, yeah. That's, I mean, listen, the Galaxy are oversensitive to that stat, Christian. It really is mm-hmm. like if they score first, it's like, oh, okay. Yeah, I mean, if you score first, you're going to get, you should get a win. You, yeah. But they've, they've drawn a couple of those as well. I think they're 10. Hold on, I have it. I literally have it. Come I think on. it's 10, 1, and Come 2. Come on, numbers guy. <clears throat> it's right here. Um, the LA Galaxy are 10, 1, and 3 whenever right. scoring the first goal, right? And 1, 10, and 1 when allowing the first goal. It is literally night and day. So... Mm-hmm. Um, that being said, there's some resiliency in this LA Galaxy team we haven't seen in the last couple of weeks. So it would be interesting what happens if they do give up the first goal in the first like 15 minutes. And do they have the 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 mental wherewithal to grind yeah. it out and get that goal back and then take the next step and win that game, right? I Wait, mean, has it, has it Ricky changed that mentality? It feels like it. I mean, you know, again, we. I, I feel like it is. I feel like his confidence has, has given them a winning mentality. Where Small sample size, Sue. Small sample know, size. That's the only thing. But yes. yeah, and, I, and I'm obviously speaking from a raw raw standpoint, and right. I will be first to acknowledge that. But I feel like that level of performance and confidence has, it gives credence to that type of you know raw raw mentality and, and you know optimism. Yeah. But it wasn't there before, and you know you've gotten results where we, we've started great the last couple of seasons. You know, mm-hmm. I think we won seven of our first ten. You know, or six or seven of our first ten in the last couple of seasons like that. So. I, and then faded down the stretch, but I don't feel like it's the same way. And when you, you've got that kind of belief behind you, but it's backed up by that kind of performances, then yeah, I think that is, you know, it's something that has been missing yeah. and it's there. So long may it continue. We'll see. Uh, just to give everybody a heads up, Yellow Card Watch, Sega Cool, Bali, Chase, Gasper, both on Yellow Card Watch. Should they pick up yellow cards in this game, they would be suspended for the next game. All right. We thought it was Julian Araujo. I, I tend to think that the information that I got uh, was Good incorrect behavior. on that. Um, but it can be good behavior, but I was told that the, like two people away, like two cards away, that Julian Araujo was one of those two cards away per- people. And if that was the case, he got a yellow card last game and he should have been one card away. And so he should be on yellow card watch, but he's not. And this is official from the league. So take this. Mm. So anyway, uh, Sega Koulibaly, uh, yellow card watch, Chase Gasper, yellow card watch that thing. There's another thing going on. Uh, cousin Feo, by the way, uh, if you're a MERS fan, I want to give you a heads up. Just because I saw this tweeted, I just want to make sure that my listeners know. You understand that I am very uncomfortable in this entire like tweet that I'm about to read because 
it is it is so far from the world that I live in or that I follow. I, I'm not an R and B and a rap guy. Like I'm not. I love Murs, by the way, but like that's not that's like it's on the extreme edge of my music listening. But right. basically, Cousin Feo is saying that Murs is going to be out there. They're gathering footage and content before the game. Um, so if you want to um, join them, you can. Uh, basically, lot 13 at 3.30 p.m., and maybe you can be in some of that footage before this game. So Merz is going to be there. They're going to be doing some stuff. Or at least I imagine Merz is going to be there. Maybe he's not going to be there, but he's usually at LA Galaxy game. So. You can stand on Kevin Baxter's car. Yeah, that's right. That's not a problem. It's a blue Man City mobile. Um, right. With, with, with two ends, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> Which leads me to believe that someone actually has the Man City license plate without the oh, yeah. extra end. Oh yeah, for sure, hmm. for sure. Or, think about. or Kevin just wanted the extra end in there for no reason whatsoever, oh, that. right? That could be that. All right. Is he that tricky? Is, yeah. is, is the panda that tricky? <laughs> By the way, feel the berm nailed nailed me 100. Uh, percent Mers Mers and Taylor Swift collab for Josh. Yes, uh, Taylor Swift coming out with a new album in October is the more exciting thing for me, and that's just. I own who I am. I have bad taste in music. I always have had bad oh, you, taste in music. You, I, it's it's fine. I love pop. I love my wife is downstairs probably watching like a BTS, uh, you know, oh, uh, yeah, like documentary crazy. downstairs. Big on that. Right. I can, I'm not into that, but I understand her addiction to it. So it's fine. I again, if, if you come into Miles house, sometimes you can hear ABBA playing at Friday night at five. So, I mean, that's great. But so, that's I mean, that it wasn't you. Yeah, you wouldn't pick. No, that of course not. Nope. OK, no problems. <laughs> All right, that's it. LA Galaxy coming up against Sporting Kansas City coming up on Sunday. Spectrum Sportsnet, LAGalaxy.com. September 4th, 5 o'clock is your TV start time. 5.08 p.m. is your kickoff time. All right. Christian, is there anything else that you want to get to before we get out of here? We good? I don't, Josh. I it's, think I've... I've, I've talked enough. I gotta shut up. Gonna yeah, go. I was gonna. It, it's nine thirty. We probably have to stop anyway. There's like a yeah. curfew, I'm sure. So why don't you tell people where they can find you, uh, and we'll get on out of here. See Miles Sports, a uh, little UCLA soccer, as well as uh, Pac-12 Network, LAGalaxy.com. If you can't find it on video on one of these six other <laughs> venues or channels you can find, please do us a solid. <laughs> LAGalaxy.com, or you can us on YouTube on the radio stream. All right, there you go. There's, there's so, Christian. I love it. I love it. I love I love you begging. I love that you're not above the begging. That I'm is, I wouldn't I'll be either. Uh, all right, I understand. Uh, if you're looking for me on Twitter, it's at Jay Gessman, J-G-U-E-S-M-A-N, and of course, at Galaxy Podcast. Cornerofthegalaxy.com is where you can find us, all the videos, all that fun stuff right there. Like, subscribe, all of our different places, SoundCloud, uh, I don't know, Apple Podcasts, any of those places. Oh, yes, yes, wonderful. Um, so that's what we got. That's where we're sit. LA Galaxy, Sporting Kansas City, coming up on Sunday. Hope to see everybody out there. And of course, we'll be back on Monday to recap that game. For Christian Miles. I'm Josh Pato Guessman. You've been listening, you've been watching to Corner of the Galaxy on cornerofthegalaxy.com. Have a great one, everybody. You've been listening to the Corner of the Galaxy podcast on cornerofthegalaxy.com. You can follow the show on Twitter and Instagram at Galaxy Podcast. And be sure to check out and subscribe to iTunes, Stitcher, and Facebook by searching for Corner of the Galaxy. Fans, we thank you for listening, and we ask that you be kind and courteous to your neighbors as you leave the podcast. We thank you for joining us and look forward to seeing you again. Until then, I'm Michael Araujo, and on behalf of the entire Corner of the Galaxy crew, goodbye, everybody.